so I wanted to make a video and chat a little bit about inspiration and kind of what that means to me as an artist and as a photographer and more importantly how I kind of approach the idea of being inspired. I think this is something that has changed a lot for me over the years as an artist and I want to shed a little bit of light for you guys who may be struggling this time of the year and just are looking for some way to kind of jolt the creative juices again. And I definitely have some stuff that has helped me. So inspiration, I think it's important to remember that this isn't something that's always going to be there. I think inspiration is not something you should necessarily wait around for. Uh, it's something that typically I think just comes to you once you kind of get started. And the hard part is, is that's a difficult thing to do. You know, I think all of us uh, creative people, we want to sit at home and we want to kind of wait for the inspiration to strike before we go make something. And the reality of that is it's a great, you know, sentiment, uh, being inspired, shooting stuff. It's a very romantic idea. Uh, but to be honest, it's not usually the case for myself, at least most of the time. And a lot of the stuff that I make, I kind of have to force myself to. Throughout that process is typically how I get inspired. Now, there are plenty of things that I do and have done to really kind of help kickstart this mindset. But I think inspiration, to be honest with you, is more of a mindset than anything else. I would say it's much less of a visual thing than I thought it was originally when I first started taking pictures. But the interesting thing about all of this is inspiration is still at the core of everything that we do as creatives. Um, it's a really important feeling to have on occasion, but it can really transform a project or a shoot or a drawing or a film uh, to the next level, especially if you have that inspiration kick. Now, interestingly enough, I've found that one of the best ways to get inspired is actually to kind of step away from what you're doing and focus on something else. And what I mean by that is to really find something else that you enjoy doing and try to find inspiration through that rather than simply just looking at other creative works um, and people's work, people's photos, people's movies that they've made. There's something to be said for looking at that in the proper way, which we'll get to in this video. But honestly, the kind of way in which I've found inspiration the most as of late has been looking elsewhere. And for me, that's been cooking. Uh, I've been really focused and having a lot of fun cooking. I'm actually thinking about maybe putting together some sort of cooking channel here on YouTube. We'll see if that actually comes to fruition, but point being, it's taken a lot of my mental kind of capacity away from creating photos, making videos. And then interestingly enough, when I come back and I'm ready to make stuff again, I feel oddly inspired uh, because to me, cooking is actually pretty creative as well. And that's kind of why I've been shooting a lot more personal work as well, all about cooking and restaurants and food and how that all works. The camera is just a great excuse to go kind of see how all this works. And this entire process of shooting food and all of that has been a really enjoyable experience and I'm able to bring kind of what I've learned and kind of what I see, especially when I'm shooting at a restaurant, back to how I actually decide to shoot photos. It's extremely inspiring and I didn't think that that was going to necessarily be the case, but I've found a lot of correlations between cooking and working at a restaurant and making photos. And that's been really fun to kind of just jolt the inspiration again and look at things differently. Now, since about mid-November last year in 2023, I've shot about three restaurants now, and each one has kind of gotten better than the last. I've not only become a better artist throughout this entire process, but I've been able to learn about something that I'm really interested in. And I've tried my best to kind of separate only looking at something visual to inspire me, if that makes sense. I don't always need to look at someone's website or look at someone's gallery or someone's Instagram to get inspired. I can do many other different things to get that same feeling and oftentimes it comes a lot easier than you might think. Something else that's really helped me is to get outside. And I don't mean just walk outside your door. I mean take an actual effort to get out there and see something new, focus on a new area that you haven't been to before, bring your camera along, maybe don't bring your camera along. I don't think that part necessarily matters. I think it's so easy to get stuck in our own way when we are just sitting at home kind of pondering what if. And the easiest thing to do is just to put one foot in front of the other and get started. And half the time I don't really even know exactly what that is or what my goal is when I set out to go somewhere for an afternoon or an evening or even in the morning. This doesn't need to be an all day thing or even, you know, traveling somewhere for a week. If you have the time to do that, wonderful. For me, it's been really great to explore new areas of LA. Bring my camera along sometimes. Sometimes I'll go to Malibu and take three or four photos. Sometimes I'll shoot a bunch. And the point being is to practice the repetition of actually getting out there rather than it's just sitting at home in my office wondering what I should be making. And I do think that's one of the hardest parts about getting inspired is once you're kind of in that rut, 
you tend to just kind of dig yourself a deeper hole over time and it gets very difficult to get out of that. Simply just getting out there, even if it's for an afternoon or an evening, really helps and it has helped me tremendously. Now, when it comes to actual creative inspiration, there obviously are a few things I love to do as well. I've been kind of building up my photo book collection here over the last several years and it's gotten pretty extensive. Every time there's a photographer that I'm really interested in, uh, whenever they publish a book, I pretty much try to buy it as quickly as possible. And I found this to be a way better way to digest someone's work rather than just look at their Instagram. Instagram to me is much more immediate and these photo books are very curated collections of work that the photographer wants you to see in a certain way. And I've found a lot of inspiration looking through photo books. And the cool thing is, is you know, you don't have to look at them just once. You can look at them over time. And with each time that you look at one of these books, you're going to notice something different. It's going to inspire you in a different way. And I tend to not look at the actual image rather than the components of the image. What I actually like about a certain photo, maybe it's the way the light is shaped. Maybe it's the actual composition. Uh, maybe it's the color palette that they decided to use. Uh, there's so many ways to kind of dissect someone's work and take bits and pieces that you enjoy and apply it to your own work without necessarily actually emulating the entire photo. And I found this to be a really helpful way for me to look through other people's work and get a glimpse into a way of shooting that I might originally not have thought to do. I have several books that have been really inspiring to me lately. The first one is by a photographer named Jamie Hawksworth. I believe he lives in London and he published this book a while back called The British Isles. And it is a really cool book. The people that live there and just, you know, it's a very beautiful kind of depiction of that area and how it's amazing how beautiful he portrays all of this through portraits, through landscape imagery, through still life. Uh, a lot of this isn't necessarily a kind of photography that I would normally do, which brings up another point to consume stuff that you wouldn't necessarily shoot normally. And this book, honestly, I found so much inspiration from because again, typically I wouldn't normally shoot this sort of subject matter or shoot it in this particular way. So it's been very fun for me to digest this at my own pace and kind of pick through stuff that really feels interesting to me. Another book that I've really been enjoying is by a photographer named Diego Varakis. Uh, I've actually never met him in person, but I have quite a few mutual friends with him and he released a book about his ongoing photographic project in Cuba. It's called De Cara al Sol, I believe if I'm saying that right. And it's a beautiful depiction of just life in Cuba. He has really intimate photographs of just everyday life, street stuff, candid portraits. Uh, it really is a beautiful book and it, I've actually never been to Cuba, but I can only imagine how beautiful it is after seeing Diego's work from there. I've always admired his stuff and the interesting thing to me is I've always looked at him more as a fashion photographer but he released this book which feels way more street and travel oriented but he released this book which is way more street and travel oriented and I found it to be really inspiring watching someone who typically shoots a certain kind of work to make money uh, focus their time and energy to shoot something else that is completely different and honestly that has really inspired me to think about and consider you know, what could I be shooting and what kind of projects could I be making um, that's different than what I typically do for work. An obvious final favorite is the Christopher Anderson trilogy. For those of you who don't know, Christopher Anderson is uh, a very well-known photographer. I believe he lives in Paris now, but I think he's kind of been all over the place. He started his journey documenting very traumatic and wild events, uh, including different wars and the passage of refugees across open water. He's really done it all. And now I would say from the work that I've seen, he's transitioned a lot more into fashion and portraiture. The books he's released, there have been three now about uh, different members of his immediate family, both of his kids and now his wife. I found all three of these books to be incredibly inspiring and I love the way that he uses light. Uh, it's really fun to look through these and you know, kind of think about how I want to shoot members of my family and friends and loved ones. I feel like he portrays all of his family in a really beautiful way and a lot of the ways I haven't really considered doing before. So it's really beautiful and also inspiring for me to really look at this and see all the different ways that he's able to shoot his immediate family. Something else that I really love to do is mood boarding. And mood boarding is kind of the process of putting images together that might inspire you for a certain look or a certain shoot. And I tend to do this uh, at the beginning of every year uh, I make one kind of overall for the entire year, kind of a visual direction, so to speak. And I made one for 2024, which I feel is the direction I want to head as an artist and the different color palettes and ways of using lights that I want to do. Um, and it's very helpful for me to kind of look at this pretty regularly to see, for one, if I'm on track, but more importantly, um, you know, what was inspiring to me at a point in time. And you can always add to this, you can always take away. 
Um, I tend to do one of these also for pretty much every shoot that I do, especially portrait shoots. I find it very helpful, um, especially when you're collaborating with someone. I think it allows for a really focused visual direction, and then that way you can take what you want from it. You can also try new things, but I found boo-boarding to be extremely helpful as well. So yeah, I think inspiration, again, is not necessarily something that comes around too often. When it does, absolutely harness it and do the most that you can with it. But the times that you don't have it, you can still kick things into gear and still make things happen. I think a lot of the time, the actual process of making things is the most inspiring of all. So remember that the next time you're kind of at home, sitting around, twiddling your thumbs, wondering what you could be doing or how to actually kind of jolt the creative juices. Hopefully some of the stuff that I talked about today is helpful. Now, before this video wraps up, I do want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, which is Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. As you guys know by now, Squarespace is a longtime supporter of this YouTube channel and my creative endeavors. Truly cannot thank them enough for their continued support of the channel. Squarespace is just simply put the easiest way to build any sort of website or gallery page or e-commerce site for really anything that you're looking to do. I would definitely say they cater towards more creative individuals. So if you're an artist, if you're a photographer or a filmmaker, someone who's looking to sell physical or digital products, Squarespace makes it incredibly easy to set up a website from scratch and really customize everything to your liking. If you guys want to check out Squarespace for yourself, there'll be a link down in the description to receive 10% off your first website or domain purchase. Thank you so much as always to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And thanks to you guys for watching. See you next week.